Hey guys, uh, Samus and Ren back with another video. Um, as I'm sure you guys have all heard, in Charleston, South Carolina, late last night, um, a gunman walked into the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. A white man. <laughs> uh, and he opened fire on the Wednesday night Bible study group and he killed nine people. Um, I'm actually going to read you guys a little bit of the of a story that they have up on the New York Times website. I'm going to link it so you guys can read the whole thing. Um, they actually do a pretty good unbiased summary of what happened. So I'm just going to read you guys a little bit of it. Um, an intense manhunt was underway Thursday for a white gunman who opened fire Wednesday night at a historic black church in the city's downtown in Charleston. Killing nine people before fleeing, the police chief Greg Mullen has called the shooting a hate crime. Um, chief Mullen said that law enforcement officials, including the FBI, were insisting, assisting excuse me, in the investigation of a shooting that left six women and three men dead. Mullen said the gunman walked into the historic Emmanuel AME church and attended the meeting for about an hour before op open firing. Among the dead, according to reports, was the Reverend Clementa Pinckney, who was also a state senator. He was also um, reportedly the pastor of the church and a very, very prominent um, outspoken member of the black community. Um, so that's basically a summary of what, what happened. Um, and then the article kind of goes on to give you a little bit of background about the church. The church is one of the nation's oldest black congregations. The Gothic Revival building dates from 1891 and is considered a historically significant building according to the National Park Service. The congregation was formed by black members of Charleston's Methodist Episcopal Church who broke away in 1822, one of the church's co-founders, Denmark Vesey, tried to foment a slave rebellion in Charleston, but the plot was foiled by authorities and 35 people were executed, including Vesey. The church houses the oldest black congregation south of Baltimore. So this is a very, very extremely symbolic act of walking into this church, one of the oldest black churches, with one of the largest and oldest black congregations this white man walking into this church pulling out a gun and opening fire on these people is very symbolic it is very symbolic it's extremely symbolic this is also on the eve of juneteenth Juneteenth is tomorrow, Friday, June 19th. For those of you that don't know, I also have the definition of Juneteenth. Juneteenth or June 19th, 1865. Juneteenth, also known as Juneteenth Independence Day, Freedom Day, or Emancipation Day, is a holiday in the United States that commemorates the announcement of the abolition of slavery in the U.S. state of Texas in June 1865 and more generally the emancipation of African-American slaves throughout the Confederate South. So he also did this the week of Juneteenth, which is the day that pretty much all the slaves were emancipated throughout the South. Also very symbolic. This is a hate crime. This is an act of domestic terrorism. This is an act of white terrorism. This is an act of white male rage. Nine people are dead. Nine people are dead. A white man walked into this church that was founded by a black freedom fighter. An original freedom fighter, not civil rights movement, original freedom fighter. 
on the week of Juneteenth and opened fire, killing nine people. Now people are gonna tell you, this is not about race. Why are you putting race? I've already seen comments. Oh, look, the race baiters are already at it. Why do we need to know that the gunman is white and the nine people that were killed were black? Because this is a hate crime and it is about race and it is extremely symbolic and domestic terrorism in this country against black people and against black churches is a national hallmark. It is a calling card of this country. White people been targeting black churches. They've been blowing up black churches. They've been calling in bomb threats to black churches. There is video and camera footage of this guy that did it because they had security cameras set up in the church and in the parking lot because they've gotten threats before. This is terrorism. This is terrorism. White people, white Americans, are waging acts of terror against black Americans. I'm gonna read you guys a little bit more, more stuff that I wanna read you. Um, some comments on the New York Times article. There's only three comments as of right now, so they're still good. For those who think terrorism is something new, Look at the devastation visited upon this community. Attacks on black churches are not new. Attacks on black communities have been going on since Reconstruction. This is the backdrop against which protests, excuse me, this is the backdrop against which protests against aggressive policing of communities of color exist because it is all part of one continuum. It's all part of a system. The system of racism, white supremacy that is designed to keep us living in fear and oppression. I got married in Charleston. I got married in a church in Charleston. I woke up this morning, I couldn't sleep. I hadn't heard about this yet, I couldn't sleep. I, I can't sleep sometimes. I got up, I put on some water to make some tea, I checked my news feeds, and I see Charleston shooting, Charleston shooting, what? I click on it and I see that nine people, nine black people have been killed by a white gunman in a church in Charleston. What? What? They don't want us here. You know? They hate us. You know? I broke down crying. I had a panic attack this morning. And that's what terror does to you. That is what terrorism does to you. That is what living in the middle of a war zone does to you. You have, you have trouble sleeping at night? You guys can't sleep at night? You guys feel like you're living in fear? You're afraid every time you walk outside? You're afraid every time you see a cop car? You're afraid every time your brothers and sisters and moms and dads and aunts and uncles leave the house that that might be the last time you see them? That is because you are the victims of, of a war and of terrorism. And don't let anybody tell you anything different. Don't let anybody tell you that this is not terrorism. Don't let anybody tell you that this is not about race. Don't let anybody tell you that this is not about a system that the goal is to keep you living in fear, keep you terrorized, keep you living in oppression, keep you living under the thumb of white supremacy that tells you that your life, your black life, does not matter. It took three hours for this story to even hit the mainstream media because they still want to talk about this white woman pretending to be black but they don't want to talk about nine actual black people that were killed in a hate crime, in an act of domestic terrorism by a white man. We know that it's a white man, and what, what are the news feeds already starting to spin? Mentally ill, mentally disturbed, lone wolf, lone gunman. They are never going to accept and admit that there is a pattern, that these are not isolated incidents, that every case of police brutality is also linked to every case of violence enacted against black people from white people. This is race-based violence and it is, it is as American and as old as apple pie. It is terrorism. It is the same as lynching. It is the same as blowing up churches. It is the same as when they blew up the church and killed the four little girls. It, it is the same thing happening now in 2015.
same thing. And it's because of a system. It is because of a system. A system which instills in us white supremacist ideals, which instills in us, you know, racist ideals. All white people. All black people. Ideals that we have to start talking about and working to undo and working to unlearn at every level. School system, you know, education system, economic system, government system, police system, judicial system, at every level, our entertainment, everything that we do. Or else it's never gonna stop. And I just feel, I feel so tired. I feel so tired. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. I'm just so exhausted. But one thing I want to say, I called my mom this morning. I heard about this and like I said, I broke down crying. I had a panic attack, you know? I'm pretty sure I need to see a therapist. I'm probably suffering from some form of like, you know PTSD or something like that from living in this constant fear for my life like we are living in a war zone because we are we are being terrorized in our country of birth like we are not American citizens and I, I, I had a literal a full-on panic attack I could not breathe I was crying hysterically I called my mom I said mom I don't I can't handle this I can't handle this. I don't know how to handle this emotionally. And my mom said to me, you know, it's okay to step back. You can't let these things consume you. And I'm going to tell you guys the same thing. We can't let these things consume us because it makes you just want to curl up in a ball and die. And if you curl up in a ball and die, then that means that white supremacy wins. That means that the terror and the terrorists, the white male terrorists, the white female terrorists, Rachel Dolezal, even though I said I was not going to say her name, I want you guys to know that she is a white female terrorist. She is a part of this campaign of terror that white people have been waging against black people for the better part of 400 years. They win if you let this consume you. They win if, if, if you let this make you curl up in a ball and die. So I want everyone today to love yourselves to practice self-care, listen to music that you like, read a book you like, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or this or that, lie down, talk to someone, you know, if you're watching this and you're black, I love you. And you matter and you are important. And your life matters. And I also encourage every black person living in this country, go to the gun range, learn how to use a firearm, Get a license if that's what you have to do, if that's what's required in your state. And arm yourself and protect yourself because it's obvious that the police are not gonna protect you. The government is not gonna protect you. No one is gonna protect you. You have to protect yourself. We have to start protecting ourselves. Obviously these white people are out here strapped up. 20 year old white boy strapped up, walked into a church and shot up people. It's not a game. Blackness is not a game. It's very real. And what is going on is very real. And that's just really all I have to say. Um, and take care of yourselves today, really. Take care of yourselves. If, if at any point you feel yourself starting to crack, do not let this consume you. Please feel free to just take care of yourself. And if you're black, I love you.
Peace.